the self is denoted by the word Brahman and because of the reasonableness, the blissful one is Brahman who is also the Atman. The sutras are very precise. There is no ambiguity. There is no confusion. Hence, no debate, no discussion. Brahman is the blissful one. The only thing that is blissful. Bliss comes from this place of bliss. Bliss is not external. You cannot find it. You cannot create it. Because it is your very nature. Why? Because the Brahman is Atman. Now, what's this Atman in relationship to the Brahman? It is just the path you take to reach the Brahman. Till the last moment, up until that final merging, that explosion, you have an individual identity. At the physical level, it's very gross. I have a body. That's your identity. In the mental realm, the collection of thoughts, you're identified with it. That's your identity. Even the tiniest of sensations, the farthest of whispers belongs to this identity called the self, the Atman. When the dust settles, when all disturbance, everything that is agitating and giving you this perception of separate individual identity settles. Just like the clouds have passed, the sky is clear. Something is different. The air around you is different. The sky above you is different. That moment of clarity, that moment of clearing of the rain clouds is the only moment when you know what this Brahman is. You will know this without any individual identification. That is why Buddha referred to it as nothingness. Although it is completely him. If you have to just explain it in slightly different words, what Buddha experienced was himself. What Jesus experienced, what Moses experienced, they did not experience something else. That is why a lot of them use direct personal language to describe that experience and to describe their identity. Krishna in the Gita says he is the beginning of all things. Kabir says, I am neither skin, nor blood, nor bones, nor muscle. I am neither my mind, nor my thoughts. I am the creator of worlds. It is Kabir, a simple, humble weaver, a realized individual saying, I am the creator of worlds. This is not ego. This is not identification with something external, like a religious identification. 
in religious identification it's personifying something as supreme as the ultimate in spiritual realization there is no separation whatsoever between you and that when atman wakes up to its ultimate reality it becomes brahman there is really no separation at all even at this very moment there is nothing separating you from that ultimate how can there be any separation how can you divide life if life is one if consciousness is one if it is in the scriptures if it is documented with such precision and this is the oldest source of knowledge we're talking about thousands and thousands of years of distortion deletion addition distraction and yet this idea that the self is the ultimate but it has to be realized it cannot just be an intellectual acceptance this is the underlying theme of waking up which is the most important secret hidden in the scriptures the purpose of the scripture is to awaken you it is not to educate you it is to enlighten you in the literal sense we use the word enlighten in a totally wrong way to understand something to get a little more clarity we say enlighten me but that enlightenment and spiritual enlightenment are two completely different things scriptures are not meant to enlighten you in a sense that you can become a little more knowledgeable you will know something about the nature of reality as a concept as a theory this is not the purpose that is why the most important teachings have been passed through a tradition a relationship between teacher and a student one of the oldest relationships the most important relationship where the teacher removes the confusion that's what the scripture is these are not meant to remove your pain and suffering temporarily when you hear these words it should actually surprise you it should shock you in fact you should tremble in fear and confusion what are you telling me are you telling me that i'm not going to die there is no death to me how how will i understand that that's what this statement means it's not a simple statement to say that brahman is atman to say that the universal is the individual is not a simple statement how can you listen to this statement accept it and not long to realize the true nature of who you are how can you say well fine i am brahman but in this life i want to be an idiot i want to be attached to an idea called me to deny your true nature is to deny everything it's like saying well fine for the first time i am being told that i am not the light i am the shadow what i am identified with is the shadow the only way for me to know the light and become the light is to get rid of this shadow it's all wonderful 
It's all in the scriptures. I can understand it. But I don't want to let go of the shadow. I've invested my life in this shadow. I want some returns from this shadow. I've educated this shadow. I have taught it manners. There's so much I've done with this shadow. How can I simply drop it? That's the confusion. Otherwise, it's so easy to drop it. Otherwise, it's so easy to withdraw from the hecticness of life and find that quiet time for yourself. What is this withdrawing? What is this dropping? It's not to just drop dead. It is to embrace silence. It is to embrace quiet reflection, contemplation, turning inward. Why is it such a big challenge to do this? It's because you're deeply invested in this shadow. It has become so important. But as long as you are attached to this shadow, you will only know yourself as Atman, the individual self, not the universal self. You have to go on a journey slowly. One by one, you should start discarding what is clinging to this universal reality that is masquerading as the truth, which is nothing but just your thoughts and desires and certain ideas of who you are.